the channel. Um, I apologize because I know it's been a while since I made a video, but um, life life has just been life you know? I don't know what else to say. Um, intern year got quite busy and I've been very busy the past couple weeks slash months. Um, so I've been tied down with a lot of clinical work and hadn't had the time to um, take some time out and make a video. But in today's video, I just want to, um, first of all, say a huge congrats to everyone that matched. Yeah! Match day was last Friday and I still remember that period. What is it? You bet! <laughs> and um, I still remember just what it meant. It, it's weird to think that that was a year ago. That means I've been on this YouTube journey for over a year. That's wild. Anyways, in today's video, I'll be going over how I paid off my, um, not paid off, but how I plan to pay off my student loans and also how I managed to stay on top of things and make sure things didn't get out of whack and how I um, plan to, you know, pay it off on time with a goal of before I graduate residency. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, so um, it's no secret that medical school is very expensive. Um, that's very well documented. Um, in this video, I'll mostly just be talking, I don't have a script. I'll just be talking based purely out of my own experience. This is purely anecdotal. It's just my experience. It's not generalized. Um, and this isn't meant to serve as any kind of financial advice. Anyone who seeks financial advice should to go find a financial advisor. I don't know a single thing about financial advice. I am not in that profession. But with that said, um, I have done some research on this. Um, this is something that is very important to me. And um, also coming from a Nigerian background, uh, uh, loans are something that we don't take very, uh, you know, it doesn't sit right. But anyways, medical school is very expensive. Um, my medical school, um, my tuition was over 300,000 um, over the four years, 300,000 US dollars over the four years. And that's because I was, um, I was considered out of state. Um, and on top of that, I'm Canadian. So the Canadian dollar is, uh, is much lower than the US dollar. And then on top of that too, you have to pay for, you know, you have to live, you have to pay for exams, study materials, rent, gas. Um, food, the essentials, clothing, warmth, you have to pay for all those. So medical school is very expensive. You're not only dealing with all of those things that you have to pay for, but you're also dealing with not having any income coming in compared to the rest of your mates after that graduated undergrad. Um, and um, that comes with, you know, a lot of burden. So a lot of people have to take out loans, not just for the tuition itself, but for rents living life in general um so i'm going to break down how people um like afford medical school in general into three main buckets the first bucket is your personal savings slash family support family or friend support um and that's mostly you know whatever you have to contribute um so whatever you've saved from the past whatever help your family gives you, whatever help your friends give you to help pay um, and survive. Um, the next bucket is what I'll refer to as government aid, government or private aid. And that, um, that includes like loans, like government loans, and also um, like private loans or institutional loans. So that's things like here in the US, for example, there's something called FAFSA. F-A-F-S-A. -A. Um, in, in Canada, you've got um, OSAP um, for those from Ontario. Um, so those are like some examples. Um, and here in the US for private loans, there are things like Sally May. Um, you could also get like a loan from your bank. Um, and then the third bucket um, is um, the medical, what I'll call like the medical school's own form of aid. And that's things like scholarships. So those are the three main ways that people mostly like afford um, medical school. 
So for me, um, I got a little bit from each bucket actually. Well, a lot from each bucket, but the most being the second bucket that um, government aid slash institutional aid. Um, so some of you might know this, some of you might not, but before I started medical school, I was a registered nurse and I was a registered nurse for almost three years. And I was always saving um, during that time. So for my first year of medical school, um, especially the first semester, um, a significant amount of my tuition was from my prior savings. My family also helped, especially with things like, um, like my first car, for example. Um, my, my parents helped with funding um, a, lot of, a lot of it. Um, I paid for it cash and my parents helped with funding that um, because as a student, I didn't have anything else. And then um, things like gifts, whenever I saw family and friends also helped with cost of living and rent and whatnot. Um, and then from the second bucket, which was where I got most of the aid from, I, I took out a loan from, uh, well, it's not really a loan. I, um, I, I took out a line of credit from my bank in Canada. So as a Canadian, I didn't qualify for the U.S. federal loan. Um, so I had to get a, a private loan. Well a line of credit from my bank in Canada. Um, and uh, with me being in a field um, that is medicine, so I believe medicine, dental, yeah, medicine, dental, um, TD Bank, which is my bank in Canada, um, gives you up to $325,000 um, line of credit um, that you can use however you want. Um, interest is typically a lot higher compared to government loans. So that's the caveat, that's the catch. The interest from those bank loans or private loans are typically higher than the government loan. Um, I also took out um, uh, some loan from OSAP, the Ontario um, uh, Student Loan, but it was only the federal portion and the max they could give me was like 10,000. So not much, that barely gets you anything. And all of this is in Canadian dollars. Um, so by the time I converted that to US dollars, it wasn't that much. Um, and then for the third bucket, which is scholarship, some people, for example, would get like full ride or some form of scholarship. My medical school didn't offer any kind of like full scholarship that you could apply for, but you could apply for certain amount of grants um, during the year. And every year I made sure I applied for some grants. So that could be things like it could be $2,000 or $5,000 grants or, or like $10,000. And um, that's typically like merit based. So it's based off of like, be it like performance academically or performance clinically or recommendations or research or something outstanding that you did in the community. Um, so um, I'd always apply every year and all those accumulated and it counts, you know, um, it, it helped. So that's, that's typically how I survived paying for medical school. Uh, I ended up with a significant amount of of uh, money being taken out of the line of credit, as you can imagine, um, because there's only so much family can help with, and um, there's only so much that my personal savings could have gone to, and there's only so much that those um, scholarships, like I mentioned, um, there's only so far you can go. Um, so about three quarter of my... Um, my tuition was from the line of credit. But upon graduation, what I then decided to do was aggressively start paying a lot of this down. So I'm almost one year into residency, Woo, which is wild. That's crazy to think of, almost one year, sheesh. Um, but anyways, about eight, nine months into residency now. And um, what I've been doing um, with Amanda is Every paycheck, we set aside a specific amount of money that goes straight into uh, paying back the the loans from the line of credit. And we've been very aggressive with it. Um, there's a YouTuber that I watch a lot. Um, she's a financial advisor and um, she has this spreadsheet. Her name is actually Nisha. Um, she's an accountant, she's British. Uh, and uh, she has this spreadsheet and I, I've kind of like copied that spreadsheet. I'll be using the spreadsheet in regards to allocating um, money every paycheck. And then every month 
my partner and I um, uh, put aside um, an aggressive amount of money that goes towards that line of credit. And I've calculated it and we should be done paying back both my and her loans um, before I graduate residency, which is very exciting. It's, it's extremely exciting. So um, as you can hear, that's my work phone that's actually going off. I'm selling my work scrubs. That's how much this video means. I haven't even changed yet out of my work scrubs and I'm, I'm out here trying to talk to you guys. But um, but yes, so that's the strategy. Um, we're being very frugal right now because I just feel like these are healthy habits to kind of build right now. And like I said, just being Nigerian, something about loans just don't sit um, well with me. And with the interest rate also being crazy high. Um, initially, when I started residency, I wanted to buy a house, um, but we had to put that to the side and um, rent instead, and then used a lot of the money that could have gone down to down payment and um, and buying a house and paying mortgage to pay back student loans and getting it done. Um, so that's the strategy I've gone with right now, and uh, hopefully it works out. Um, what I'm doing right now is about forty percent of. Amanda and I's combined paycheck goes into what we call essential living. So that includes like rent, uh, food, um, uh, internet, phone bills, um, gas for um, her car, um, electricity. Um, uh, um, yeah, I think those are those are the essentials. Um, and then about twenty ish percent goes into loans 2025 um goes into those loans um and then the remaining 35 percent is allocated into like future savings and fun um so future savings emergency savings and fun but that's kind of like how we've broken it down and so far it's working um sometimes amanda accuses me of being a little bit too frugal but um but yeah um so far it's working um uh hoping that eventually everything works out and um and then that way like uh when we when we're both out of this stretch we both know that there's only like one thing to focus on and that will be like family um uh starting um the rest of our financial future together so that's the plan on, on, uh, on how I'm um, attacking my student loans. Very aggressive about it, but um, it's, it's kind of, my mentality is kind of like, get it done, um, keep your head down, knock all out, get it done. Wow, someone really wants to talk to me from work. Um, get it done, get it over with, and then um, reap the benefits later. Uh, and so far it's been working. But um, anyways, yeah, like always, if you haven't subscribed yet. Oh, by the way, a lot of people watch the videos and haven't subscribed. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please give the video a thumbs up. It really does mean a lot. As you can tell, it takes a lot of effort to um, get out of work, um, make these videos, edit them, um, upload them. So if you can just subscribe give it a thumbs up um feel free to share it as well um that would mean a lot all right i will catch you all in the next one and congrats again to everyone that matched cheers salute